Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Living Visible. My name is Fiona and this week I will be sharing my thoughts with you on how we can love our neighbours during this season. When I was little I used to watch the Australian soap Neighbours. I don't know if any of you from my generation remember it. I do think it's still going today but with the busyness of life I don't watch it anymore. But I do recall coming back from school looking forward to watching the storyline in Ramsey Street unfold with the Robinsons and the Carpenters, Harold and Madge and of course the love story between Charlene and Scott. I still remember the theme song today when good neighbours become good friends. So why do I recall this today as I'm talking to you? Well, as I was watching Neighbours every day after school with great expectation, I'm reminded that I was a spectator and never a participant. At the time, I would have loved to have physically had the opportunity to walk down Ramsey Street and meet the cast, but no, the opportunity never did arise. So when considering the neighbourhoods we live in, I'm drawn to ask, are we spectators or are we participants? And if we do participate within our communities, how can we do that to God's glory? So we know that Jesus, as the image of the invisible God, is our example in everything. And as such, it's important that we look at how Jesus behaved towards his neighbour, towards those who were around him on a day-to-day basis. So Jesus befriended people. He ate with all kinds of people, including sinners, prostitutes, and those considered unclean, as stated in Mark 2.15. Jesus met with the people. He moved from town to town, preaching the good news that the kingdom of God was near. He healed every sickness and disease. He preached in synagogues and temples, but also people's homes, in the field, on the lake, and while he was traveling. Jesus provided for the people. He fed the 5,000, turned water into wine, gave fishermen miraculous shoals of fish. Jesus prayed. He performed many miracles through the laying on of hands. Through spoken words, he gave sight to the blind, he healed the leper, he raised people from the dead, he cast out demons, he healed the lame. And he did this not for profit or fame, but because of his great mercy and love for the people, for those around him, his neighbours. Jesus stopped for the one. In Mark 5, 21 to 34, While Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, he stopped for the woman with the issue of blood, the one who was near him. Jesus let people know they were seen. Zacchaeus, one of the chief tax collectors, had climbed a tree to get a glimpse of Jesus in Luke 19, 1-9. He would probably have thought that he was invisible to him, but Jesus saw him. He called him down from the tree and asked him to host him for dinner that evening. Zacchaeus went from being a spectator to a participant in God's kingdom that evening as Jesus' presence changed Zacchaeus' life. Jesus had compassion on the people. He didn't rush on past but took time to meet with people. Jesus truly was a friend and a neighbour to people. Jesus taught his followers all about God and his kingdom, giving them a hope and a future, including how to be a good neighbour. Jesus spoke out. His words brought healing. His words brought life. In John 11, 1 to 45, we see Jesus, friend and neighbour, raise Lazarus from the dead when he commanded him to come out of the tomb after four days. Jesus forgave those who persecuted him. Even on the cross, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In Luke 23, 34. So as we reflect on all the behaviours that I've spoken about, we can clearly see that Jesus is the good Samaritan 
that he, de he describes in Luke 10 when challenged by the expert in the law about who our neighbour was. In the account Jesus conveys, we see the Good Samaritan stop for the one, even though he wasn't like him, befriending a stranger and showing tremendous compassion. We see him provide and meet the needs of the one beaten up, not considering who he was or why he was in that place, and not considering if he was deserving or worthy of help. This showing us the attitude of forgiveness. While Jesus embodies the behaviours and attitudes of this good neighbour, he doesn't allow his audience to be spectators, but instead invites them to go and do likewise. And that same invitation he provides for us today, he is calling us to participate. In October 2020, I was blessed to be able to become part of the Good Neighbours Coventry team, working for Hope Coventry. Since then, I've been working with an amazing team to help to reduce isolation and loneliness in our city. Good Neighbours is Hope Coventry's biggest project, currently supporting around 250 isolated and lonely elderly people throughout our city. But at the height of COVID back in the spring, 80 referrals a week were coming in and our numbers escalated to around 1,500. At the time, we had 400 amazing volunteers who began supporting people with many things from shopping to dog walking, telephone befriending, delivering jigsaws to those who couldn't get out. We even had one volunteer who I know of who used to go and stand outside the window of her befriender's house so she could see her during lockdown. Today, we continue with our telephone befriending service and hope to be able to have in-person befriending soon when restrictions ease. We even have some international befrienders. We also have a local coordinator who provides targeted help for men in our city who are struggling with their mental health, which has been very valuable during this season. We are always looking for volunteers from a range of backgrounds with a range of interests and availability so we can best match clients and volunteers. We've had some real success stories over the years. Please check out the links below to view some of our good news stories. And there will be a link to the online information sessions and application process if you are interested. So I also work along with Feeding Coventry and Coventry City Council on their emergency food projects for those in the city who have been told to shield. With over, with over 100 emergency food parcels that have been sent out um, to people in our city since uh, November. Each week, 40 winter food packages are also being sent out to families in need in our city. So I hope Coventry, working with their partners, are an adaptable project and are always looking for volunteers so if you feel that God is leading you to volunteer in your community please prayerfully consider us. As I finish I would just like to pose you a question. How can you love your neighbour well during this season?